This is the new Fiat 500 and it's a little bit like looking at yourself in the mirror after lockdown because it seems a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier. That's because while it may look like the old Fiat 500, it's actually an all new car and this time it's electric powered only. And that means that it's full of batteries which adds the weight. So this car starts at just under £23,000, though that's before the government grant for plug-in vehicles of £3,000. If you want to see how much money you can save on one of these, or any car for that matter, click on the pop-out banner up there to get a car wow. Alternatively, just watch this video first, then later on you can just Google Help Me Car Wow, and me and my team will help you get the right car for you, a fair price from one of our trusted dealers. Buying a new car? Then head to Car Wow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. Car Wow your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start off this video by talking about the design. You see, the Fiat 500 has always traded on its looks, and this new one looks very similar, so it's gonna be the same story. But it's not the only small electric city car which trades on its looks. So does the Honda e. These cars are actually very similar, yet their design is very, very different. For instance, that is just so Japanese. This is just completely Italian looking. That uses a modernist design. This is retro, that's a four-door. This is a two-door, but they're at the top of their game. Out of all the latest electric cars, these two are the best looking, but which one is the coolest? Now, what we've done is put a pinned comment below the video and you can vote to let me know what you think. Would you rather have the Fiat 500 or the Honda E in terms of their looks? Let me know. For me, I really don't know, I like them both. It's a tough one. You might be thinking this car is identical to the old Fiat 500, but there are some key differences, such as this front bumper, the new 500 logo, the fact you don't have a normal grill, though there are some vents here to cool the battery system. I love the light design. The top of the range car gets LED lights as standard, and the way you have the daytime running light here over the top, it's like an eyebrow. Then there's the extra daytime running light here as well, which is sort of like blusher on its cheeks. Another good feature is this, look, the indicators, the way they just pop out the side. Love them. Down the side, it's the classic Fiat 500 shape. Though it is six centimetres longer than the old car, three centimetres taller and six centimetres wider. All models get this lovely chrome strip, this chrome badge here and the chrome around the windows. We'll start at 15 inches, though these at the top of the range, 17 inches. It's cute. Here at the back, it's the same theme as similar, but still different. For instance, you've got new LED tail lamps and I love the way they have their little 500 logo in there. You've got Big fat bumper. There is, of course, no exhaust pipe because it's electric. Fiat badge right across the back and a roof spoiler, which apparently provides 500 kilos of downforce at 186 miles an hour. Yeah, that's just for show. Just like the little venting on the front, they don't really do anything. I'll tell you what does do something, for me at least, this matte grey paint. It is so cool, though it is a £1,000 option. Unlike the outside, the inside of this new Fiat 500 is very different to before. I really like this dash design and you can get different trims for the top part of the dash. This one is called Techno Wood, which sounds a bit like a 1990s German porno film. Also, it's not actually wood at all. It's rubberized. It's about 200 pound extra, but looks good. <laughs> That's the main thing. That's what this car's interior is all about. It's got cool little designs to it. There's nice little features here and there. The two-spoke steering wheel is cutesy and it moves quite a bit for reach and height. So it's easy to get an ideal driving position. And of course you can alter the height of this driver's seat. There's plenty of movement forwards and backwards and loads of headroom. So people who are tall will be able to get comfortable in the front of this dinky little car. I quite like the fact that they've kept the climate control buttons separate from the infotainment system and where the gear selector buttons are here. It's all very easy to use. Actually, this infotainment system has really impressed me. This is the upgraded larger screen version. It's lovely. Graphics are brilliant. It's easy to navigate through the different menus, though I won't be bothering with any of the Fiat menus. I'm just going to use my Android Auto, or you could use Apple CarPlay if you've got an Apple phone, and you can connect to them wirelessly. And look, look at the graphics and it's responsive. I'm impressed by that. Normally on the lower end cars, you get a seven inch screen, but it has most of the functionality and that all important Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. All cars do get these digital dials. When I say digital dials, it's just one actual dial, but it's a nice clear screen with quite a few menus you can just scroll through and have lots of different information, such as you know your trip computer, your navigation, your media, everything that you want, and then all the information about your battery and stuff like that as well. Now let's move on to storage. Small car, can I fit my flask? in the side door bin. At a squeeze I can, and you've got some more storage under here where you can fit a bottle under. There's also a USB port there and a 12 volt socket. 
Just cover that up. There's some more storage, I think, under here. Come on. There we go. Just another little tray. Look, it's quite deep as well. That's your armrest, which you can extend. There's also a clever little cup holder just here. I love that. Then under here, you've got a rather large glove box. So here in the front, it seems very practical, especially as if you want to charge your phone wirelessly, you can get a wireless charging pad there. And oh look, you've got the skyline of Turin. If you haven't got wireless charging, you can just plug into the USB port there. That looks really cheap and nasty. In fact, quite a lot of these materials and the fit and finish is a bit cheap, but you kind of forgive it because it's cute and it has little features like this. Look, an old Fiat 500 there in the door handle. Made in Torino, it says. And that's the thing about this car. It just gets away with it by having those cute little elements that other cars don't have. It's certainly not boring. But what happens when you need to carry some rear passengers? So I'll just set the seat up to my ideal driving position. Yes, I know the door's open car. I'm just going to get into the back. I'm not going to slide this seat forward because uh, I want to show you exactly what it's like in my position. There we go. Move this seat out of the way so you can see what's going on. How's about that then? Yeah, it's not great, is it? It's very, very cramped here in the back. No headroom for an adult, knee room. Yeah, my knees press right up against that seat. It's only room for two as well. And there's no cup holders. There's no USB charging. There's nothing here in the back. Now, that might not bother you, but what happens if you want to carry younger children? Well, they'll be fine, but babies? Mm, if you've got a really young baby, you might struggle. Well, you do have easy access Isofix anchor points there. Trying to fit one of those bulky rear-facing seats in the back of this car, you have to shove the front seats forward quite a way. Anyway, let's get out the back and check out the boot. Yeah, I know it's a small car and it's not... Oh, God, I can't get out of it. I know it's a small car and you can't expect much, but there are other small cars like a Honda E is bigger in the back and more comfortable. In fact, if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can watch my full in-depth video review of that car. Anyway, the boot. Now you can only fit three airplane size carry-on luggage cases in this boot because it's not huge, 185 litres capacity. Now that is slightly bigger than the boot of the Honda E. FYI, if you do need to carry larger things, you can fold down the rear seats and to do that, you remove the world's smallest load cover. Fold the seats down, they split two ways like that. And then you'll see that you do have a huge lip like that because there's no flat floor. It's a relatively inexpensive car, what do you expect? What is good though, you have a huge opening because of this big tailgate. Still, this car is nowhere near as good for carrying luggage as a Peugeot E208. And if you click on the pop-out banner, you can watch my full in-depth video review of that car. And that brings on to five annoying things about the new Fiat 500. This car's key is unnecessarily large. Also, you have to have it in this exact position there in order to turn the car on. And even when you do that, yes, it'll turn on and it's actually saying ready to drive. But for some reason, it's also saying key not in the car, but it is, it's there. I just put it there, Fiat. What the heck are you on about? These rear windows don't open at all. They don't even pop open slightly. That's rubbish. If you want this 11 kilowatt charging cable, which you probably do, it'll cost you 250 quid. As standard, the car only comes with a normal three pin socket. And if you try and charge it on that, this particular model with the larger 42 kilowatt hour battery, it's gonna take you 15 hours. When you fold the rear seats down, they sometimes get snugged on the seat belt and then that then dislodges. And when you shut it, it gets in the way. Ah, and then it's all trapped. Whenever you're maneuvering at low speed, the brakes make this annoying noise. It's as though the brake pads are made out of mice, and whenever you apply the brakes, they go eek, eek, eek. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. All Fiat 500s get something called E latch, and instead of a normal door handle, you press a little button in there and it electrically opens the door. Look. Yeah, that's good. There's also a button on the inside there as well to do the same thing. Now you might be wondering what happens if that system breaks. Don't worry, there's a manual release down there just in case. The satellite navigation system not only shows you all the available charging points, it'll even shade out parts of the map which are too far for you to reach on your remaining range. There are ice fix anchor points on the front passenger seat, which is a blooming good job considering how hard it is to fit a baby seat in the back of this car. Not only can you set different charging times, you can actually choose between five different settings for the power consumption of the charging so you can manage your load at home. 
This steering wheel covering may feel like leather, but it's not. It's vegan friendly, fake leather. Also, the seats are made out of 20% recycled plastic from the sea, and the mats are made from 20% recycled nylon. How eco-friendly is that? You can get this new Fiat 500 with two sizes of battery. The smaller one is a 24 kilowatt hour battery, which gives you a range of 115 miles, and you can charge it up to a maximum of 50 kilowatts. Then there's the larger 42 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is what this car has. That gives you a range of 199 miles, and you can charge it up to a maximum of 85 kilowatts. Now this car has 69% of its battery left and a range of 108 miles. Being squatted down in this position is making me want to go for a poo and that usually takes me about 10 minutes. So while I go have a comfort break, I'm going to plug this car in and see how much charge and how much extra range I can add to it in the 10 minutes it takes me to go to the toilet. It's car wow science, okay? There we go. So that is fully done, cost me £1.34. We've taken the percentage of charge up to, let's have a look, 85% and increased the range to 136 miles. So that is 28 miles added in the time it takes to have a poo. So there you go, in case you're wondering. Okay, let's see what this little Fiat 500 is like to drive. We've got 84% of battery, 134 miles it's saying. What I'm gonna do is drive it for my whole review section, see what it's like on the roads. And at the end of it, we'll see how far I've gone in total miles using the trip computer and how much battery we have remaining. And that way I'll be able to work out using special Matthew Watson maths, how far it should go in the real world on a full battery. In the meantime, let's assess the drive. So I'm gonna find some bumps. There's some bumps there. Mm, it's okay. First thing I do notice is the steering is super light. I mean, look at that, look, I can do it with a finger. Now I'm getting a little bit quicker. I'm starting to feel all the undulations in the road. The car does seem that it's just like fidgeting around constantly. Do you know what? I'm gonna head back into town and do a U-turn because one of the great things about this car is the turning circle is super tight. It's under 10 meters, which is bettered only by a Honda E, but that has a turning circle almost like a London taxi. But look at this. This is better than a Mini E for the turning circle, a Renault Zoe and loads of other cars as well. Look at that. And that light steering is helping when doing those kind of maneuvers. What I'm gonna do is put the car into range mode. That means that when I lift off the accelerator, I get more regenerative braking. So it slows down quite a lot. Oh my gosh, you can really feel that. Look, here's a traffic light. See if it'll bring me to a complete stop. I like that. I like one pedal driving. It just gives you more control. You also know that you're not wasting energy by touching the brakes. Now, one of the great things about Fiat 500 is that it's easy to park. So someone here has left me a nice space. I should be able to fit into that dead easy, especially as there's a panda parked in front. Another small car. So, look, ah, oh, light steering is the thing. Visibility in this car is all right. You've got huge door mirrors. I can hear the car making that squeaking sound from its brakes. Honestly, that's so annoying. I hope it's a one-off on this car. If it's not, Fiat, you've got to sort this out. The one pedal braking making it quite easy to park. We <laughs> just ease into the spot. There we go. That reversing camera's really helped as well because it's really high definition. Anyway, that's that test done. We all knew the Fiat 500 would be easy to park. The only problem that I'm noticing now is that while visibility is generally very good, that rear pillar does create quite a bit of a blind spot when you're pulling out in situations like this. So, mm, wish me luck. So small and narrow, easy to drive in town and nippy when you need to get away. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> that's gonna crash into the car in front. That's good as well. You've got auto emergency braking just in case you have a moment and you need some system to save your skin. I was in full control there, people. I was in full control. I knew what I was doing. I just wanted to just accelerate to enjoy this car's performance. You see, this one has a 118 horsepower motor, which means it can do 0 to 60 in nine seconds. The entry-level car has a 93 horsepower motor, but 
it's pretty nippy, especially for town work. And seeing as speed limits now everywhere are pretty much 20 miles an hour in town, one little flex of your right foot and you're over the speed limit, so you better watch it. Okay, let's see what this car's like on a faster road, such as a dual carriageway. Now, the first thing I notice is quite a bit of wind noise and a bit of tyre noise. That's annoying. What's less annoying, though, is the fact that it may be a very small car, but you do get automated cruise control. So I press this button here, and now I can keep myself a safe distance from the car in front using radar guided cruise. And if I press this other button, I've got auto steer and it'll auto steer to keep me in lane. But let's just check it out, see how good it is. Will it keep me in the center of the lane? It's working. The steering's a little bit jerky, it's not smooth, but it does keep you in the center of the lane. Last thing to test though is overtaking ability. So it's 50 miles an hour, floor it. And now that is 70. That is definitely quicker than the old Fiat 500, unless of course you're talking about an Abarth model. So that does make it good on the motorway. Finally, let's see what this little Fiat's like on a country road. Here you really notice the suspension being extremely fidgety. It's always bobbling around. Part of the problem is, is that they've had to fit this with quite firm suspension because for a small car, it's relatively heavy. It weighs in at around 1,300 kilos. Now to put that into perspective, the old Fiat 500 weighed in about 1,000 kilos. As a result, it doesn't feel quite as agile or as nimble as the old car. However, because most of the weight is caused by the batteries, it is at least low down in the floor, so you don't have a very high center of gravity. As a result, when you go around a corner, this car doesn't lean much at all. Still doesn't feel as much fun though as the old petrol version. Now I know what you're gonna be getting is a load of petrol heads going, wow, well, there you go, you see, electric cars, they're not as much fun, are they? It's gonna be a boring future for us all. Well, not so, because if you want a small electric car that's fun, there's always the Mini E. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can watch my review of that car. Okay, that's the test drive bit over. Let's find out how much battery I've used and how far I've gone to see what the real world range is on this new Fiat 500. Okay, so I started on 574 miles. I've now done 617, so that's 43 miles I've traveled. I've now got 56% of battery left. I started on 84, so that's 20. 8% of battery use. So if I was at 100%, can't do this in my head, 43 miles divided by 0.28, it would be 153.5 miles. That is the real world range, which isn't terrible, but isn't amazing either. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Fiat 500? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist because there are quite a few better small electric cars out there. However, very few look as cool as this. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Also, comment below any kind of other videos you'd like us to do. If you want to watch some more videos, click on the windows there. And if you click on the box, you can download the CarWow app. It's completely free. You can use it to like browse all our reviews and see how much money we can save you on a new car. On average, we can save £3,600. That's right. Also, it has a special number plate reader, so you can scan any car's number plate and it'll tell you how much that car is currently worth. Download it. It's completely free.